Immersive cinematic editing will always be on top of the editing food chain when it comes to storytelling. And once you learn the motion design and 3D effects I'm about to show you, you will begin to feel like you're feeding to Why does Mr. Beast have a team of 10 to 15 editors? Because it's not just content, it's visual crystal to the chronically overstimulated. For those of us who are neurologically less fortunate, I strongly recommend always starting in Pinterest. This will fuel our imagination and creativity for our animations. In my opinion, the number one thing separating a crappy looking edit from a good looking edit is the idea and how it's laid out. So here we are in Pinterest, I just searched travel animation, and a lot of the animations you guys saw was based on a lot of this stuff. For example, this one's set up in a 3D environment with clouds, so I added that in one. And in this one, there's lots of flipping pages, so that's where I got the idea to make the animation with the pages that are flowing. And then with this one, it kind of follows a scene with like lines and stuff like that. So that's where I got the idea to make the line over top of the maps. So I'll show you how to do that as well. So here we are in DaVinci. I just have a PNG of a piece of paper. So I'm going to show you how to take this and convert it into a 3D object so that we can play around with it and give it lots of motion. Here's another example with a different page. So I'm going to show you how to do that really quick and then we'll move on from there. So we're just going to go to the effects and drag on a fusion composition clip. We're going to go to the fusion tab and I actually learned this effect a while back from a guy named Eliable. So I'm going to start by dragging in a background and connecting it to the media out and then turning the alpha all the way down. And if I just drag this gray square to here, it automatically creates a merge. I did not know that. So how I did this is I made this with AI and then I brought it into Canva, removed the background, and then I downloaded it as a transparent background. So anyways, I'm gonna select the media in one, hit shift space and add in a transform node. So now I'm gonna disconnect this and we're going to make a quick 3D environment. So I'm gonna select the merge and hit shift space. I'm gonna add in a shape 3D. Then I'm going to add in a transform node. Then I'm gonna add in a merge 3D and then a render 3D. I'm going to connect the render 3D to the media out. And then I'm going to hit shift space and add in a camera 3D and connect it to the merge 3D. I'm going to click this box up here to see two viewers. And then on this side, I want to view the merge. So I'm going to select this little dot on the merge like that. And now if we pull back our camera, we can see our page. But as you can see, it's pretty distorted. So what we're going to do is select the shape 3D. We're gonna change it to a cylinder. And as you can see, it's on the left side of our viewer over here. I'm going to select the transform on the shape 3D. And then I'm going to rotate it on the Y axis. And then I'm also going to scale it down quite a bit. I'm actually gonna rotate it the other way because right now our lettering is backwards. So I'm just gonna rotate it. So as you can see, it's still distorted. So that's when we can come to the controls, play with the radius, and you can also play around with the height too. So now this is where the transform nodes come in, this one and this one. Because as you can see, if we select this transform node and then rotate the angle, as you can see in the left here, the more we rotate it, you can see it's like twisting around a sphere. So then we can select this transform. As you can see, if we take a look, the transform node is behind it here. So under the pivot here and under the Z axis, I'm going to drag that up until it's kind of in the center here. So like I was saying, to add motion to this, all we have to do is uh, basically keyframe the rotations. And the more options you keyframe on these two transforms, the crazier it will be. So if I select this transform, on the first frame of our clip right here, I can keyframe the angle and then I can come to the last frame and I can drag this up however much I want, say maybe something like that. Now we can come to this transform, come to the first frame, keyframe the rotations, come to the last frame and just kind of play around with them however you want. And now as you can see, if we scroll through it, our page looks like it's blowing in the wind. So now we have a few options. We can continue to build out our animation in this fusion clip by connecting more things to this merge node. Whatever we connect to this merge node will appear in our environment. To keep it super simple, and what I did just to save time, is I went to the edit tab and I hit command copy and I click over here and hit command V. Now I can come into this fusion clip. I can delete this media in one, switch it for a different newspaper, connect it, and I can select my transform nodes and I can play around with these keyframes and change the motions so they don't have the same motion. And now, as you can see, we have two different pieces of paper with different animation motion. And so in this fusion tab, as you can see, it's just one image with images on top of it with some drop shadow. So now if I take this fusion composition clip and drag it on top of this, I can come to resolve FX, select this drop shadow and drag it on just like that. Now I can drag the drop distance all the way up just like this. I'm going to turn down the blur so it's a little bit sharper. And then now I can come to the video and I can position this over here, something like this. And then I can do the same thing with this one over here. As you can see, I added the drop shadow and then I can position it just like this over here. I can throw an adjustment clip over top of this. I can drop on a fast noise, select water surface, turn the contrast all the way down. I can drag on a zoom blur, turn up the center exclusion 
and just to blur a little bit so that our edges are now a little bit blurry. I can drag on a camera shake, turn the randomness scale to zero, PTR speed way down to like 0 0.03. I'm also gonna drag on a vignette like this and turn up the softness just for a little bit more cinematic look. I can come to the color page. I can throw on my favorite LUT like this, turn up the temperature, contrast, mid-level detail. And now I literally set this up in like five minutes and we have something that looks like this. So now I'm quickly going to show you how I made this look 3D, like with these clouds looking 3D and everything, and how I did this line that also looks 3D. So I just gathered a bunch of images and I placed them with drop shadows. I made a whole tutorial on this. So I'm going to add in a background just like this and connect it here. I'm going to hit shift space and add in a polygon and we're going to connect this to the background. Now, whatever color we make this background is the color of the line. So I'm just going to go with kind of a dark red right here. Now, if we select our polygon, we're going to right click here and remove polygon line one. And now we can click somewhere to begin our line. So I'm gonna click like right here and I'm gonna make a zigzag. So now I'm gonna click kind of right here and then up here and then down here and then finish off kind of right here. So if we drag up the border width, you can start to see our line. I'm gonna keep it pretty thin. So like 0 0.0018 looks about right. And now if I select my polygon and click these corner pieces here, we can select this up here, which will round them just like that. So now I'm going to select this one, click that, select this one, click that. Now we have something that looks like that. Now to make this kind of look 3D, I'm going to select the background, hit shift space and add in a drop shadow. I'm going to set the drop distance to about here. I'm going to drag up the shadow strength. And now, as you can see, it's casting a shadow. So to animate this now, we can come to the first frame with our polygon node selected. We're going to turn down the length all the way. I'm going to keyframe that now. And on the last frame, we're going to drag it all the way up. Then we can come to our spline, select our polygon, select all this and press S to smooth it out. Now we're going to convert this to a 3D environment. I'm going to select this merge, hit shift space and add in an image plane 3D. Now we can disconnect this here for now. I'm going to hit shift space and add in a merge 3D. And then that connects to a render 3D and this connects to here. So now it's a 3D environment. I'm going to switch to screen mode up here and I'm going to view this merge 3D. Now we need a camera, right? So I'm going to click away, hit shift space and add in a camera 3D. And as soon as we connect this to the merge, it appears here and we could just drag this back like this. So our animation starts over here. So I'm going to zoom the camera into that position by just moving the controls. Now the cool part is whatever we connect to this merge 3D will appear in our 3D environment. So in my case, I just added a few clouds. So I'll show you what that looks like. I'm going to hit shift space and add in an image plane. Here's an image of some transparent clouds and I'm going to connect this to the merge. I'm going to select the image plane and drag this back. Now it's too big right now. So I'm going to go to the transform tab with the image plane selected and I'm just going to size this all the way down really small. And so now if we drag this down, out of the way. And so now if we look here, when we drag our camera, the clouds look 3D. If we want another set of clouds, I can select these two things, hit command copy, click away, command V, and then drag it onto the merge. Now we can drag this over here so that when our camera reaches over here, we have more clouds just like that. And so what I'm going to do with my camera selected, I'm going to go to the first frame and drag it to where I want it to start. So over here, I'm going to select transform. I'm going to keyframe position X up here. And then I'm going to go to the last frame and drag my camera where I want it to end. I can go to the spline and press S on this so that it's smooth. So basically, if you can just remember image plane, merge, render, and camera in this position, this is a super easy and fast way to convert any setup to a 3D setup, right? See, everything behind this merge was just made normally. And as soon as I just added in these three things, it becomes 3D and you can add multiple aspects of 3D to it. I have some really cool DaVinci tutorials dropping soon, so make sure you hit subscribe, and we'll uh, see you in the next one.